Hi, my name's Del. I'm one of the directors at the Bristol Cable and here today to talk about diversity and representation within the media. It's not just a question of racial and ethnicity and a lack of representation there, but one thing that I've always noticed is a lack of class representation and let's not forget gender representation as well. So what I've done today is brought along a few representatives from community and independent media to talk today about the issues surrounding a lack of diversity and how we can move forward and make some change within the city of ours. You're a white working class Bristolian. Do you see many people like yourselves within the media? Not really, to be honest, no. No. I think, I think it probably depends which media, I think, but it, certainly in, in some of the, if, if you go to the BBC or Bristol Post, you know, I think, you know, they're beginning to recognise it, but generally speaking, you you will find what what you said really, mm. which is which is generally white middle class people mm. that don't really often identify or, or have lived experience of some parts of the city, mm. you know, particularly around if, you know from sort of South Bristol, North Bristol, Pank the States, or even kind of inner city Bristol. They would tend to come from a certain kind of bubble, mm. but the reality is an awful lot of um, an awful lot of people in the media are from outside the city anyway. Yeah. So the, the the recruitment processes with and and the the entry level, particularly into the BBC, mm. a you often have to be a graduate, but often they'll recruit internally. So you'll get somebody from BBC Lincoln that will they'll advertise for a drive time show and they'll come down and so so and my thing is that that sort of affects the the you know young young people, local people coming up through. Mm. So mm. the 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 whole kind of industry, and I think they recognise that now is tilted. But but, but I've, I've been amazed that the that we said about Bristolian accents that you know there is an issue. Mm. Um, there's probably an issue with, with with certain broadcast media generally with with with, with accents. But you, you know you see you hear Hugh Edwards on the BBC News, don't you? You, you know Sean Keaveney's and Mancunian on BBC Six, but you don't hear Bristolian accent. I think people you often hear, don't you? Oh God, do I sound Bristolian? Decisions are made through a, a certain prism. Yeah. So I once had a quite a difficult conversation with a with a journalist. She's a very good journalist, a white journalist, quite middle class. And I said, "But do you not think it matters who you are and where you come from in terms of the authenticity at which you portray?" And he said, "No, no, no. I just hold a mirror." I'm like, "But you don't. You tilt the mirror in the direction of your own experience and what uh, you want." Yes, exactly. With me. So I think that actually, it's, it's, it's for me, it's important not just what stories you tell. Is who is telling them? Mm. You know, I'm on that mm. point because you're talking about the decision making process. So, in your experience and people's experience, do you, you know, have you really seen within the media? Do you think that, that there is enough diversity at the top of the ladder when these decisions are being made about what we're going to commission and things? Definitely not. I think the higher you go up, the less sort of diverse it becomes, right? And people are allowed an entry level based on their their filling this diversity quota. And as soon as that's not no longer required or it's not attractive or trendy, they kind of lose that position. So there's much less um, sort of progression into the higher management level, the senior mm. positions. Um, and so you can have, in an attempt to diversify the media, they'll have someone from a um, minority background reporting on this issue and then mm. as soon as that's done their, their, their use is kind of limited mm. and they don't, they, don't, they don't have that progression into a career or whatever and it's kind of like what you were talking about people considering tv or production mm. as a career it's because they don't see people like them mm. progressing in any way mm. yeah and can i ask you specifically mm. as a as a woman uh, involved in media do you think there's a, a gender issue as well as class and race oh absolutely yeah i think it's um it's very apparent if you look at kind of the composition of a room in any sort of uh, meeting or um, networking event like how how much there is a gender uh, line as well mm. as a race and a class issue mm. um, and that's not even going high up that's sort of just on a entry level mm. it's very apparent we make this big thing about diversity in Bristol and that we, we love to celebrate it, but we're not really sort of seeing it. And, you know, from my personal point of view, I mean, it's, it's difficult because I had a six month stint at the BBC. I, you know, yeah. as an adult, I had my stint when I was younger also. Um, I've worked for a couple of magazines in Bristol and I'm now involved with the cable. And so, 
I find myself thinking sometimes I've managed to get in, but is this just tokenism? You know, yeah. and I was talking about this, uh, I think it was earlier this year or last year with someone and, you know, she actually said to me, you know, um, which is really made me think, she said, don't worry, aren't you tired of being the only black guy in the room? Yeah. You know, and yeah. quite often it has been, yeah. you know, um, all, you know, the, my, the entire time that I've worked in the media, um, yeah. I don't think I've ever worked with and if that changes person. I can't you know this is generalisation but I think often the response to that is a tokenism tokenistic gesture and it becomes from white people it becomes a kind of particularly in the media oh god we, we better seem to be doing this mm-hmm. without really understanding why yeah. why mm-hmm. it's important They're just trying to, to fulfil like some kind of criteria exactly to hit and, and, I, and I see that yeah. happening but yeah. I don't see an understanding as to why it's important mm-hmm. because because if, do you know what I mean yeah, yeah. because if we, well, you know going back to your point Nora if the um, decision makers uh, the, if you go the further up you go the decision makers are not reflected they don't have that experience mm-hmm. then you, you're not going to get that structural shift you're going to get no. a, um, like a stagnant a, kind of a very surface yeah. um, gesture yeah. but a not deep understanding about the structural systemic yeah the systemic mm-hmm. issues yeah. that are, are producing these results all, all over the, it, it, you mm-hmm. know not just um, the media but in all of our sectors mm-hmm. because it's a structural yeah. issue yeah yeah, yeah. It's like, even if you look at, um, so it's like you were saying, it's kind of a tick boxing exercise mm. of like having someone of, of a diverse, and this can mean like sexual orientation or, or race or whatever, that they have a quota to fill. And usually when these, um, when media outlets begin to respond to people creating their own spaces, so for example, with um, Galdem, which was a collective of women of colour, which mm. was a online platform that was created, what was created by, um, co-founded by a student at the University of Bristol as well. Wow. Um, and um, the response is then to either um, try and sort of bring in the, 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 the platforms into like larger, so absorb them into larger um, public uh, publication houses or media outlets or whatever, and then almost dilute the message of what they're trying to do. Mm or try and respond to it by these kind of additive like um like measures of like oh we'll have a week featuring you know writers of color for a week in this very very white very uh middle upper middle class um media outlet we'll have a week where we feature them so that we've Tick this exercise, mm. and then we move on, and we go back to exactly what. You were but really, before. is that effective? It's just like, about the gatekeepers, right? Yeah, so like yeah. things like media and politics and things that rely a lot on person personalities and and having a face, tend to have people who are the gatekeepers of the industry, right? So they let you in, they mentor you, they guide you through, mm. and then they you you create your own space based on whatever they've left behind for you. And mm-hmm. if, you know, this is when we're talking about a structure, it's because this is been perpetuated through generations of people so mm. young people are now creating new uh, spaces through like the internet like you were saying exactly. and social media mm. and this is through things that don't require gatekeepers and that's mm. why they have to having the success that they're having. Like you, can, you, don't to, you don't need to ask permission yeah. you can bypass yeah. and, it's, and it's exposing the game though mm-hmm. the rigged mm-hmm. game yeah I think. And I brought up sorry a really good point about youth because that's another group that I see as being underrepresented Mm -hmm. in the media Mm -hmm. I can't think of uh, I mean I'm not saying that there aren't but I can't certainly name a TV presenter radio presenter under the age of 30 most people seem to be my age or above Mm -hmm. and I mean do you do you think you you're the young people in our group do you think this is an issue you're clearly not talking about me This like phenomenon that everyone was so taken aback by was when Stormzy got really involved with the general election, mm-hmm. uh, and everyone was mm-hmm. like, "Oh yeah, that, I'm yeah. Gonna, grind for Corbyn." Yeah, yeah, grind for mm-hmm. Corbyn, yeah. and yeah. Uh, they, you know, people who were a bit older and a few generations up, were so taken aback by the fact that all these young people were like yeah. interested in politics now. But mm-hmm. the reality was that they'd always been interested. It was just that someone who they knew and they they mm-hmm. they had so, had a yeah. following of. Yeah. Was, yeah. was like pulling people together for a cause but it doesn't mean that they weren't interested it's just that they weren't being um, listened to or expressed in the mediums yeah. that people are used to but the problem mm-hmm. is what will happen now is a PR company will react to that and they'll create some kind package of stylized packaged version yeah. of that and, and miss the point again yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sorry. Did, did you find that during the election did you you know were you taking a message from mainstream media or you know were you also as in as there was you know, getting most of your news from social media. 
Um, well, I would say at that time of the election, like, I would say social media was just exploding. I mean, like, figures, um, such as Stormzy and, like, even other kind of, like, massive artists, um, um, like, were kind of, uh, like, getting involved and putting their different perspectives online, like, on the Twitters, the Instagrams. And, I, like, for me, like, simply, like, when you have, a f um, um, a figure of representation yeah. for the people like that don't really have a voice that kind of don't really understand but want to understand it's like for me I was just seeing spikes in interest